How's it looking for the Prime Minister today? Are you worried about this vote? No, I'm not worried at all. In fact, I'd like to get this vote out of the way so that we can get on focusing on the issues that really need to be focused on. You know, today, Russia is firing rockets into Kyiv. We've got a global cost of living crisis because we can't get wheat out of Kyiv to the rest of the world. There are some really huge issues which the Prime Minister needs to focus on and we as a cabinet and government do too. So this is a distraction. We want to get this out of the way and then move on with the business of government tomorrow. And Nadine Dorries, what does the Prime Minister need to get Ghana in terms of support for you to feel that this matter has been put to bed and he's safe? Oh, Beth, I'm not going to talk about numbers. If he got, you know, a majority of one, that's enough to move on. You know, the, I think the most substantial point is, or the substantive point is, that 14 million people voted for the Prime Minister in a general election, the biggest vote that a Prime Minister, Conservative Prime Minister, has had since Margaret Thatcher. I find it utterly bizarre that a small number of MPs think that they can overrule that vote, that, that vote of 14 million people. It's quite something that they think they can do that. And so, you know, let's get this vote done. Let's let's move on tomorrow. Um, the Prime Minister is going to, to win comfortably tonight and we can move on but tomorrow. Do you enjoy, uh, detractors of the Prime Minister say it's not a small number of MPs. It's actually dozens of his own MPs. And this hasn't been organised. And it really is on their conscience that they feel they can't support him anymore. At least 54 letters. I mean, that is not... That's not just a, a small handful, is it? So there are 350 plus MPs. It, it, relatively, it is. But anyone who says that this isn't being coordinated and isn't being uh, organised behind the scenes, I'm afraid, is not telling you the truth. This is a very well organised campaign. It's a perfect storm for some. It's Remainers who are taking in others who are disaffected and for a number of reasons, those who, who lost their jobs in Cabinet or as Ministers. And I'm afraid anyone who says that this isn't organised is not telling you the truth. It is a very well organised campaign by a small number of individuals, some who believe that they should be the next Prime Minister. Which individuals? Well, you know, I'm not going to say, but it's a small number of individuals who've organised and whipped up this door. And I'm afraid we're going to reach a point where people aren't going to vote for the Conservative Party because people don't vote for divided parties. So we need to get this vote over and done with. And those MPs need to hear a clear message. You know, we know just now that the Conservative Party donors have said themselves that they aren't going to support the party if, if the Prime Minister is removed. I think a number of MPs in marginal seats need to hear that and a need to understand what they're doing. £80 million those donors have donated to the Conservative Party over recent times. It's those, do those donors that have helped us to win the election and they need to hear and, that message. And Nadine Dorries, just in terms of divided parties not winning elections, there's been a bit of... Uh a bit of agitation around should I stay today about uh, you'll know about this about some tweets between you and uh, Jeremy Hunt Jeremy Hunt saying it's time for change and you you said you said if you've been leader you'd have handed the keys of number 10 to Corbyn you've been wrong on almost everything you're wrong again now that's what you said uh, to Jeremy Hunt um it, that, that, that's kind of exacerbating this civil war isn't it no, what, what's your response to that because Jeremy Hunt today has come out himself I'm surprised you haven't mentioned this, has come out yes. today himself and said that he is time for change. I think what he means is it's time for him. And, you know, I don't want to talk about individual personalities, but what I would say is that you can't say repeatedly that you're not going to challenge the Prime Minister while there's a war in Ukraine and on the day Russia fires rockets into Kyiv decide that it is time for a change of leader. I'm afraid that's just not acceptable. And I don't want to talk about personalities, but I'm afraid sometimes it just has to be said. There are individuals who do believe that they who don't like Brexit, who are Remainers, who have been able to whip up a number of MPs in the party, and I'm afraid that's just not acceptable. The donors have spoken today, some key people in the Conservative Party that you will, you will hear about and see over the next hours. Um, a large number of MPs believe that they should be listening to their constituencies and the Prime Minister should remain in post. And, you know, there's one other important point, Beth, if you just forgive me. 
The Prime Minister delivered Brexit against the odds. He personally drove the vaccine programme. He personally drove the testing programme. He personally drove the decision to lift all restrictions, COVID restrictions in the UK. We have the lowest unemployment rate since 1974. We are in, we will be in economic growth, the, the Bank of England have decided. We have one of the lowest inflation rates. He's got every big call right. Nadine Doyce, just as an aside, actually, also you said to Jeremy Hunt, your pandemic preparation during six years as health sector was found wanting and inadequate. Your duplicity right now is destabilising the party and country to serve your own personal ambition. I mean, you were a health minister. Is that an admission that the pandemic preparation was not good enough under the Conservative government? So, we, we, you know, and we're not going to rewrite what happened, though. We know the, the World Health Organization report and other reports which have come out since the pandemic. We know we did particularly well, but we did particularly well because of the way the Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, handled the pandemic and Matt Hancock, I might say, handled the pandemic and drove the UK through the pandemic to a point where because of our vaccination programme, because of our testing programme, we were one of the few countries in the world, if not the only country, that could lift all COVID restrictions and open for business again. Boris Johnson got it right on the pandemic. He made the right calls. Jesse Norman, who is married, you'll know, to the Vaccine Task Force Minister, Kate Bingham, who was the person that helped deliver, with, with the support of the Prime Minister and former Health Secretary Matt Hancock, that vaccine rollout. He has been absolutely excoriating about yeah. the Prime Minister today. Well, as I said, there are a number of people, anybody who says that this isn't coordinated in a drip, drip way by certain individuals behind the scene is, the scenes is not telling you the truth. Just, just finally, Nadine, you're, you're a cabinet minister. You're one of the most senior... Nadine, sorry, 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 <laughs> sorry. I'm you're sorry, one of the... I'm going to say my name. <laughs> I quite like saying your name. Let's just keep going. Um, you... you um, you're one of the most senior cabinet ministers. You're, you're one of the Boris Johnson's biggest supporters. But this sort of attack on attack on uh, Jeremy Hunt is, is quite personal. No, I no, mean, no, some people so, some people would say that it's sort of demeaning of the office of a cabinet minister to make such personal blue on blue attacks against a colleague who doesn't agree with the prime minister. I mean, he's allowed to disagree. I mean, what do you say to those people that are quite shocked by what you've said of Jeremy Hunt today? Well, if they're shocked, it's because they're probably people who are going to vote against the Prime Minister anyway. And what I would say is probably demeaning of a former Cabinet Minister and somebody who puts themselves forward as a potential leadership candidate to repeatedly say they're not going to issue a challenge while we're at war with Ukraine and then on the day Russia fires rockets into Kyiv, issue that challenge. One of the rebels said to me that, um, that you're... Uh, your intervention today is one of the Jeremy Hunt's best weapons. Are you helping him by being so aggressive towards him? I mean, what do you say to that? I say it's nonsense and that what they're unhappy with is the fact that, you know, that tweet thread that you're talking about begins with the fact that Jeremy Hunt rang me on the 23rd of July 2020 to tell me that the way to handle a pandemic was to remove people who tested positive from their homes and to put them into isolation hotels. That's how Jeremy Hunt would have handled the pandemic. But, you know, it's that, that's, the, and kind of that um, revelation, I think, has angered a few people, but I'm afraid it's factual and, and I'm only repeating what was factual. And just finally, Nadine, the Prime Minister, you, you say he's going to win, win the vote tonight. I mean, precedent would suggest that sitting Prime Ministers tend to win confidence votes. Um, but is he a dead man walking, i.e. he can survive, but he can't recover once he's lost the support of dozens of his MPs and also the confidence of many people out there in the public? So I'd say the only vote that matters are the 14 million people who voted for him in the general election. The Prime Minister won the biggest majority of any Conservative Prime Minister since Margaret Thatcher. It's kind of a slight day of madness today, but I hope we get through but, this vote tonight. We will get through this vote tonight and we can move on tomorrow. But, no, he isn't a dead man walking. Because, as I said, he's got every single big decision right. And really, that's all people should be focused on. Cost of living crisis, war in Ukraine, the big decisions that need to be made moving forward. We need our Prime Minister to be 
be focused. But Nadine, and many, many of this. your MPs would also say you've been consistently trailing in the polls. The Prime Minister's personal ratings have collapsed. Uh, they will be looking at their seats if they're marginal, being very worried that they are going to lose their seats. That the, the Prime Minister has become a drag anchor on the Conservative brand. Like once he was, you know, he was the superstar and now he's the drag anchor. And you, you might disagree, but you, you can understand why some of your colleagues are worrying. So I'll answer that, but I'll just make one more point. We also have the lowest unemployment rate since 1974 delivered by this Prime Minister. But on, uh, yeah, on and, that and the point, highest inflation in, in, in four decades. I mean, I know so that's Beth, a global Beth, issue as well, to, but, but my point is, is that there's lots of anxiety. We have a lower anxiety. inflation rate in the US and many countries so in lot, the US. But it's but a global lot, issue because Low of the unemployment, but other very worrying things going on in the economy. But, but, but Beth, you're quoting a situation which is beyond the control of the Prime Minister, which is the war in Ukraine, which has caused global inflation rates to rise. We are lower in the UK in terms of our inflation rates than a number of countries in the EU, in the EU who are 7.5%, I think we're at 7%, and the US, which I think is 8 to 9%. So it's a global inflation crisis, a global economic crisis, and we are doing well in the circumstances. And, and that's thanks to the Prime Minister and to Rishi. OK, so finally, I've got that making me go back, but I'd like to carry on. But <laughs> finally, Nadine, what's your message to those rebels tonight? A vote for the Prime Minister because that's what 14 million people in the country did at a general election, you know? Everybody always writes off Boris Johnson. They wrote him off before two mayoral elections. They wrote him off over Brexit when he delivered Brexit. And they wrote him off before the 2019 election. He's a winner who always delivers. If they want to win their seats at the next general election, they need to vote for Boris Johnson tonight.